every day I look for ways to incorporate technology into my lessons. So whenever I have something that I want to do that's, you know, okay, well, usually it would just be something mundane at a desk. Well, now I look for, oh, well, how can I show an example of that? You know, how can I use my LCD and my tablet to, you know, oh, here's a model, here's an interactive model, let's try this. So it really has changed the way I've taught because I want to make sure I incorporate anything electronic into their lives. Right now the students are working um, together on building a timeline, but in doing the research and working with each other, they weren't allowed to talk. So they had to simulate that they were working across country with their partner, like they would in real life or in another building or even in another room or cubicle. So they had to um, communicate with each other through chats. They had to compile their information in a discussion forum. Then with that, they had to get all of their information together and find out what was important and put that into a wiki and then they all edited that wiki. And then with that information, then they each individually are creating a timeline. There's a couple different pieces and I think that you can put it in at a lot of different levels. Um, one thing is there's usually a piece or a component of my class each day that I use technology, whether it be um, an online discussion, uh, online research, uh, a PowerPoint with visuals that helps sort of capture their understanding and maybe solidify it a little bit better. Um, technology allows the kids to become engaged and become part of what's going on by bringing whatever's happening in the world right into the classroom so that they can experience it and bring that knowledge into whatever we're studying. Mr. K keeps us engaged in learning by going to Think Central. Um, it's just like stories online um, from our Storytown book and it's, better, and it's better to go on the computer instead of reading a book. Well, we've watched an origami video and instead of Mr. K having to go desk by desk, we can see it on the Promethean board, like everyone can see it if you're sitting on the couch or on the floor. Technology helps me engage students and help personalize their learning because I can actually speak their language. They are plugged in to anything electronic on a daily basis. You know, they have their iPods, they have the Wii, the Xbox. That's what they have grown up with. It's the only thing that they know. He finds cool games that make it kind of, like, because all these different planets, like, have different gravity, so each one, like, has, has more or less, so... It, so you try to get it in this like set. Um, she pr she uses her LCD projector to project her computer stuff onto the screen, so we can watch videos. She can show us diagrams and all the stuff that will you know keep us interested in just instead of just reading from the textbook. If I don't know how to do something, then I will just typically look on the internet, search around, see if I can find something. If not, then I'll ask around other, with other people. Generally, I'll ask Mr. Peterson, but some of the projects that we have done have involved some more complex things because we're using software that um, gets renewed every year. And so I've done, he's directed us towards some sites that we can use to um, find the answers, some sort of chat room things where other people have talked about um, their problems and you see if that lines up with yours. Um, and also just lots of experimentation with the software. Um, I use technology through researching for my History Day project and typing up Word documents and looking up books for my History Day and different research projects. Uh, what I'm uh, going to talk about now is an uh, after school activity that we have for and it's an extension of our engineering program called FIRST Robotics. And the FIRST Robotics takes a lot of the things that the students are doing in class, like with the CAD drafting, uh, design and development of ideas and projects, and then it implements them in a practical application situation. Uh, examples of this would be, this is a part that was drawn up in the CAD lab of a, uh, it's a motor mount for a robot that's being built that has to climb a pole up in 10 seconds. Well, the student designed this part and then we brought it down into our tech lab where we were then able to machine out the part and now it has become a part of 
the, uh, what we call the mini robot here. <clears throat> Eventually, once the wheels and motors and batteries get put on, this will be able to climb a pole in 10 seconds. As technology has changed, I've changed how I teach. I bring more to life each day and use new things every day um, that I haven't in the past. I don't have files um, sitting around. I don't have a lot of materials. And I don't use a lot of things I've used in the past because what I can find on the internet is fresh, it's new, it's today, it's what the kids are learning and doing, so it just, it just keeps everything today or fresh. Okay, so technology has changed a lot since I was younger, say in kindergarten. Like, they used to be big, blocky computers with kind of hard to type on keyboards, and now they're really small, and like the MacBook Air and stuff like that. It's cool. Wow. Um, as far as students' background in technology compared to what it was maybe a few years ago, students have a lot more background in technology than they used to be used to have, and um, so you have to be a few steps ahead of what the students do. Well, technology's changed because we used to use like barely any technology, and now most teachers will bring us into the media center or a computer lab to do our project, where it used to be pen and paper. And now we all learn how to type and text and use email and Facebook, whereas when we were younger, we never used those types of things because they weren't available to us. Today, for instance, I taught a lesson on using EasyBib, which is a citation maker. You know, when we were kids, we used to have to use um, note cards and make a bibliography with every period and comma in place. And now they have something called uh, citation makers online, which are basically like what the calculator was to math. I think that technology has changed mostly in all the features you are now able to do on the different uh, applications. Um, like there's so many different new video and photo features and on many of the computers. Because back then I didn't do a whole lot with technology and since about middle school I've really gotten into computers and whatnot and I fell in love with technology. Like I built my own computers so it's a big part of my life now. Technology and kids. I feel sometimes like we're on a runaway train. Um, and that train is going faster and faster. Maybe seven, eight years ago, we were going up the hill and it was slow. And then um, coming here, you know, with CS4, I imagine they hit the top of that roller coaster. And now with CS5 and the fact that we have brothers and sisters showing younger siblings or they're showing their friends what we do in class before they get here, that roller coaster is going down and picking up speed and um, it's unbelievable. Wow, the future of technology is just wide open. I think um, we have to go where the kids live. We have to take it a step further and see what kinds of things that we can do to bring the portable technology into their everyday learning. It's highly motivational, and more and more kids have access to it. So things like the e-books and the e-book readers, um, using um, uh, video editing equipment using their iPhones. There are um, tools that the kids have that they can do videos and they can um, edit the videos right on their own devices. So I think that's going to be exciting to get that all incorporated so that the kids see relevance um, with their um, personal lives and with school, that it becomes more interconnected. In the future, I see more of of, you know, personal electronics being used in the classroom. You know, kids bringing in their iPods, bringing in their DSIs, you know, or their portable PlayStations, because all of those things that we can access that way too, I mean, they're internet ready too, so we can have them with their own, you know, not having to rely on us, you know, supplying netbooks or computers. The kids can bring their own and it, you know, it would be so amazing. And then we can have the software, we can download it, they can use it that way. The future for our technology classes would be that we allow the kids to experiment with all of the different things that are that are out there. All of the programs that we use in class are free programs, they're free downloads. And so when the kids, if we can get them to simulate, like we're doing in here, what they're going to be doing when they go to college or when they go to job or give, those, give them their 21st century skills, then I think that that's where we need to head.